Hello everyone and uh, thank you for tuning into my video. Uh, my name is Neil. I have liver cirrhosis. Uh, so and there's no cure for that. So these videos are just about the uh, bringing awareness to the disease. Uh, kind of uh, my story, my background, how I deal with it on a daily basis. And uh, just all, overall about awareness. Also to let people know they're not alone. Um, you're not, you know, this disease is growing at a, at a pretty fast rate. Uh, so it's becoming a lot more popular and a lot more common. So you're gonna start noticing more people as far as having um, this fatty liver and then um, going from there throughout the different uh, progressions. Um, so uh, first I'll start talking about fatty liver disease. Fatty liver disease is kind of like the doorway to liver disease. Uh, basically what it is, it's the liver starting to become unhealthy. Uh, the tissue starts to inflame. It starts to enlarge. Uh, you wind up getting fat deposits on there that should be burning off and running through your system, but instead they're depositing in your liver. Now at this point in time, uh, there's probably going to be no symptoms. You're not going to notice anything. You're not going to um, probably notice anything at all. You might notice some some uh, less energy. You might uh, be out of breath easier. You know, you might not be able to uh, do as many things as you used to do. That's about it. But for the most part, I would be surprised if you would get any um, symptoms at this stage. Uh, about 50% of Americans have some kind of fatty liver disease. Uh, it's, it's, we've now gotten to the point where we're in a society where everything is now, 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 now. You know, uh, fast food, you know, McDonald's on every street corner. You know, it, it's too quick and it's too easy to get. And we're always in a hurry. We always got something going on. And now in this fast paced world, you know, um, you know, you may have kids that you may have to take places to school or to after school curriculum, uh, things. Um, you might have pets you might have to take to the vet. You may have another family member you have to take to a doctor's appointment. You might have a job you have to go to, you know. So life's busy and we get moving and we start having less and less time for doing things like cooking a home cooked meal. Uh, you know, even one, let alone three. Um, you know, doing things like uh, having the time to plan, meal plan, or having, uh, you know, the time to exercise or to get to the gym or to do more things. Uh, so we're, we're just living in this fast paced society and food's just not as healthy as it used to be. Plus, you know, there are things in the food, um, preservatives, chemicals, things like that used in the food nowadays that isn't as natural as it used to be. Um, and no, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm an expert on food or I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat any of that stuff or anything like that. I, I truly believe a moderation though is a good idea. Anything too much of is, is not good. Um, you know, uh, some of us got into this position by by too much alcohol, uh, you know. So it happens, you know. We we are creatures that that tend to want what we want. We want it now. We want more of it, and that's just human nature now, you know. And it is what it is. It's not right. It's not wrong. It's it's just life. So. Um, that's a little bit on fatty liver. There's not a whole lot to talk about on fatty liver. And the reason for that is, like I said, there's no real symptoms. And this is such a, a common thing nowadays. It's becoming extremely common. So um, the next stage is going to be fibrosis. Fibrosis is now you're starting to get scar tissue. Um, the scar tissue, though, if you were to change your diet at this point in time, so you've got fibrosis. They found scar, some scar tissue on your liver, right? And now you made the choice to stop drinking or to drink less, um, you know, stop a little less over-the-counter medicines. Maybe you're eating more healthy. You're, you know, home cooking some, some meals, doing some meal preps, 
and you're starting to exercise a little bit, becoming more active, um, with time, it is completely reversible at this stage as well. And again, for most cases, you might not notice a single symptom here either. Uh, you might not notice anything. More than likely, if you notice anything, it's going to be, you know, fatigue. Or it's going to be, um, you know, you, your appetite might start being a little bit less because you got that that um, inflammation going on in the stomach and you've got extra pressures built up and stuff like that in there from this organ expanding. Uh, so um, in fibrosis, for the most part, like I said, again, probably no symptoms. Um, most people don't realize that they've got some kind of, you know, liver disease until it's too late and that's the cirrhosis. At that point, now that is not reversible. So in fibrosis, you might notice some itching skin. You might notice some bruising easy. Cold, you might get cold easy. That's from the blood becoming thinner. But for most case, most point, you probably won't even notice. Um, I didn't. I, I didn't notice anything. It, it was too late by the time I wound up with any symptoms. And the next stage is cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is now we've got um, scar tissue that will not heal. Now we're starting to build up additional scar tissue on top of other scar tissue and the liver's starting to hardening. Now in this process of the liver hardening, now it starts squeezing on the portal vein, which is the main vein to help in digestion. Um, it's a main super highway that goes right through the middle of your liver and delivers blood from your uh, digestive system to your heart and to your body. And now that major highway is starting to get pressure built up in it because now the liver is starting to harden. Now you're going to start getting some symptoms. Um, you know, fatigue, tired, uh, itchiness. Uh, you might notice yellow eyes, yellow skin. I had all those things. Um, uh, you know, you might notice some ascetes. Ascetes is fluid buildup. And you may get it in a few different places. Um, I got it a lot on the left leg, especially uh, right around the ankle. Uh, wherever my sock was, anything above the sock was huge. And my foot was probably, you know... <laughs> three or four times the size is what it should be. Both legs were swollen at that time. Um, I wasn't able to breathe well. Um, I couldn't walk from my living room to my kitchen without being completely out of breath. Um, and what that was from, my right lung was completely filled with fluid. Now I had ascites in the stomach. I had the right lung filled. I had it all over the legs. Um, this went on for close to a month of not being able to breathe and finally I'm like you know this is not some kind of bronchitis so I finally went in and I was diagnosed with cirrhosis um, and spent almost a year in the hospital uh, constantly having fluids pumped out of me uh, the fluids kept on being infected so now this is the point where you start getting these complications uh, right here um, like I said, I didn't really have any symptoms. And then all of a sudden, wham, somebody had said to me at one point, they said, what's with the skinny face and the big belly? Um, you know, they were worried about me. Well, what that was, I lost all my muscle mass. Now you start losing muscle mass because one of the main jobs of your liver is processing and building proteins. And now your liver's not working. So now your albumin, which is super important, Albumin is pretty much what your body works on. That's the fuel. That's the gas. And now your liver's not producing it. So your body has to get that energy from somewhere. So it starts looking for more protein. Muscles high in protein. So it starts eating away at your arm muscles, leg muscles. Maybe you've, you've, you've got some abs. Not anymore. It's starting to eat away at them. And, uh, um... I remember at one point, I, I didn't even have the strength to lift myself up out of the bathtub. Uh, it was that bad. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, 
but uh, yeah, cirrhosis is no joke. And then you have end stage liver disease. Uh, cirrhosis and that one, there's not much of a difference between them. Um, you know, uh, it's it's all the same symptoms. Um, you know, the 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 difference is that end stage is where they've said you're probably not going to survive much longer. Um, which you don't stay in end stage for very long. Uh, usually, uh, cirrhosis is like stage three and stage is stage four. Um, exactly where you're at between three and four. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Uh, they might be off a little bit. Uh, like I said, it affects everybody differently. Um, you know, uh, now again with the symptoms, um, I remember I went in and got all the fluid pulled off me. I was in the hospital for two weeks. They got me on new medicine, sent me home, and a couple days later, I wound up throwing up blood and wound up back with varices being binded. Um, I've had a total of nine uh, varices binded. Um, I got the lower muscle in the bottom of my uh, esophagus that overreacts and stays pinched closed, and they have to uh, inject Botox in that once every six months to uh, so that I can swallow food. So... They haven't been able to pinpoint if that is from all the scar tissue from the varices, but they figure that's probably what it's from. Um, I have so much scar tissue built up in my esophagus. But all these are symptoms of the end, the, the later stages of the disease. And the funny thing is, you know, you can be running around feeling completely fine. Like right now, I feel pretty good. You know, you could have energy, you could have a good appetite, you could be feeling really good. Two days later, you could be in a coma. Um, it changes quick. And that's the hard part about this disease, is you don't know when it's going to change. Um, you know, you know um, I've had some people make some comments about... Uh, four years, three years, you know, this or that. Uh, I think somebody said 12 years they've had, they've been diagnosed with cirrhosis for and they haven't had a transplant. Um, and, and that's just more proof that you don't know. Uh, there's no way to know, excuse me, there's no way to know for sure how long you have or when it's going to strike. So my suggestion in that is to continue eating healthy. Continue taking your medicine, even when things seem okay. Stay away from the alcohol. If you have cirrhosis, you shouldn't be taking any alcohol at all. Um, that is my, uh, my suggestion. And again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional. But I do have cirrhosis. And I can tell you, if I was to turn back to drinking, I would probably wouldn't be here. Um... I believe being diagnosed with cirrhosis saved my life. It's a different way of looking at it, but, you know. Um, anyway, the other thing I wanted to talk about was this new medication that's coming out. Now, I don't have a whole lot of information on it, and I know it's just in final stages. And from what I understand, um, the uh, they don't have any way of knowing how long you can take the medicine. Like if it's uh, something you can take permanently, like the Zyfaxin, or if it's something that you can only take for six months or a year or what have you. I know that they did mention something about that. Um, the medicine is Resdifra. There we go, Resdifra. Uh, the way Resdifra works, and now, and this is for uh, fatty liver, and also fibrosis. So it is not for cirrhosis or end stage. Um, it is when the disease is still reversible. So your doctor might not even prescribe it for fibrosis. Um, but I guess uh, the most common subscribe for it is if you have NASH, um, which is a, a non-alcoholic form of the uh, liver disease. Um, so, but um, the way it works, it targets the um, uh, thyroid gland 
and it stops it from storing fat in your liver. So what it's doing essentially is keeping the fat off the liver so that the liver may uh, return back to normal quicker and, and also to help stop the further progression of the disease. So um, it is a new drug. It hasn't been out very long. Um, a lot of people have not been on it yet. Um, so I, I think in the next couple years, you're going to start seeing some more stuff come out. Um, also, you know, with, with hepatitis C now being able to be curable, uh, they are now doing, um, liver transplants, uh, with people, you know, livers that have hepatitis C and they're curing it after they put it in the, uh, the recipient's body, um, so, I mean, the, the advancements in, in liver medicine has been huge since 1990. Um, a lot of changes have happened. So we're looking forward to that. So more positive stuff coming down the pipeline. So I don't think they're ever going to come out with anything for cirrhosis itself. Because, you know, unless it's going to grow you a new liver... Because, you know, it's dead tissue um, when you get all that scar tissue. That scar tissue is dead. It's, it's not alive anymore. So, um, hence why this medicine is not for cirrhosis or end stage. So, um, well, I thank you for uh, watching this video in its entirety. Um, thank you so much for... Uh, all the follows, uh, the, the subs, I think I'm at like 1500. Uh, that's a huge blessing. I didn't think I'd get that far. And I just want to thank everybody, um, for that. And I hope everyone stays blessed and has a beautiful and amazing day. All right. Take care.